In this video we're going to look at driving a formula for the sample size uh, to achieve a certain power for the McNamara test. And the McNamara test is where you have a pre-post situation. Sometimes you could do a matched controls situation where you take a measurement, I'm going to call it pre and then a measurement post and each measurement uh, is dichotomous so it's one or zero or normal abnormal. And we can represent this, each, each person con contributes an, an XIJ. And so the it's either one for a response or zero for a non-response. And the I is what subject we're looking at. So it goes from one to N. And the J is their pre or post measurement. And then this can be put in a contingency table like this. So the pre value is either one or zero and their post is either one or zero and so they fit into one of these four categories now in we're going to let in be the the totals of these and of course the row totals and column totals and in there's a total sample size but the the cell totals can be thought of as the sum of these xi's and so if you if you take their values they're either zero or one zero or one and you sum them you're going to get a lot of zeros, but you're going to get some ones. Well, those ones are where they're both one, which is in this cell. And, and you can kind of use that same rationale for, the, for these other cells. So each of these cells can be thought of as a sum. Okay, And that, to me, leads to the central limit theorem. When you're summing a bunch of stuff, it, it tends to uh, a normal distribution. So the hypotheses is is the pre probability of a, of a response equal to the post probability of a response so is the probability of a one pre equal to the probability of of a one in the post situation so that's what we're looking at and the alternative here is is is, is it two-sided you can also set this up one-sided it's going to be a very similar argument what we're getting ready to discuss and then you can continue to break this down. You know, the pre uh, pre probability of one is 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 n one plus over n, but n one plus is are the addition of these two, and uh, and so this equivalent to this, and then the n one ones will cancel on both sides, just leaving these these uh, alternate cell or off diagonal sums and uh, well these is just equal to the you know the probability of a pre uh, response and a post non response equal to a pre non response e uh, post response and then you can subtract those and come up with this um, hypothesis um, the test statistic is pretty simple um, it's one of these two, it, and uh, if it's this setting, we're in. It limits to a normal distribution. If we're in, and if we square both sides, it's a chi squared. So here's our test statistic. But before we start driving the um, the limiting distribution or the formula to calculate sample size, we're going to take some notes here. We're going to look at the the numerator and look at its distributional properties. And this may get a little heavy for some, and so you can skip to the end of the presentation where I give the formula, and then we will we'll do uh, some simulations in R. So here we're looking at the numerator, the difference of these two values, you know, divided by N. And um, each of these is, is a probability, so this, in the previous slide was this and that was this sum okay and so since we're summing one one to n on both of those we can we can multiply that in multiply this in and and just take one sum and we get this and then things cancel and we just end up with this so this is the uh, ob observed value now let's look at the expected um, 
mean or the expected value of this difference and from the previous slide it was it was this and then you take in the expected within the sum and look at the expected value of each of those well the expected value of this is just the probability of observing a one pre which is this and this is minus the probability of observing a one post which is this so the expected value is this and then there's no uh, um, there's no index in here so there's n of these so the it's n times this divided by n so the n's cancel leaving just this value well you can separate these into you know this is the row sum so it's the addition of these probabilities this is the column probability which is addition of those the P11s cancel leaving just this so this is the expected uh, value um, let's look at the variance of this so the variance of these is we factor out an n, an n but you have to take the square of it and then the variance of the inside is just this which we showed up here um, then the variance of a, a linear combination is the linear you know the variance of, of the when i is in and then plus uh, the co all the covariances it's a double sum but i is not equal to j but if you note here that when i is not j it means there's different subjects so this is subject i and this is subject j and they're independent so this covariance goes to zero so that drops out and so we only need to look at this um, and then so the variance of this this come this difference is the variance of this um, plus the variance of that and then because that's a minus it's going to be minus two covariance of each of those well then the formula for variance is expected value of x squared minus uh, the mean squared same for here and then this is the expected value of xi1 xi2 and then let me just show it here so the variance of this is is this and the variance of this is the squared minus the mean squared and then two times the expected value minus this but one note here is that these x's are 1 or 0. So if this is a 1 and you square it, you still get 1. If it's a 0 and you square it, you still get 0. So we can take away these, these squared pieces. And so we're just looking at the expected value of xi, which is the probability, well, xi1, which is just the probability of So this is this piece, and then we're going to minus the expected value of xi1 squared, which is this, and then we can we can do this for each of those, and then this is the probability that, that, that the pre and the post are both 1, which is, you know, you take minus 2 times p11, and then the minus and minus is plus, and then that's just the, the product of those. Well now, you can start breaking stuff down. Um, the P plus 1, there's a P11 in this piece, and there's a P11 in this piece. So two of those cancels with two, you know, the minus two of them. So this goes to here. Then this piece goes to here. So then we have the squared, a squared, and a 2, which is this uh, product. So if you, if you uh, multiply this out, you get back this piece. So then, um, here, there's a P11 common in both of those, so you can cancel them out, and you just get P10 minus P01. Um, so this is the variance of our uh, statistic. So what this tells me, under the null hypothesis, when P10 and P01 are equal, this is 0. And then um, uh, 
so the variance oh so yeah this is a little fuzzy here so the variance here if p10 and p01 are equal this drops out and we're left with just this so this is the variance so this is the mean this is the variance and then when, whenever you're doing a test statistic you have to use the uh, uh, observed values which is this but, um, now according to the central limit theorem we take our statistic minus the mean which is zero divided by the standard deviation um, this and the, the ends cancel that is a limited distribution of, of uh, zero one by by the central limit theorem notice that if you take if you have a, a, a zero one variable and you square it you get a chi squared and so you you often see this as the t statistic or the squared of, of each of those as the statistic um, probably this is a little more common and under the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis you, the mean is you subtract the mean you divide it by the standard deviation remember you have this extra component because they're not equal under the alternative this also goes to a zero one variable so now we're about finished so under the null hypothesis here the limiting distribution is a normal and the cutoff value is x and here's the standard deviation is mean so to find x we convert it to a standard normal and, and to convert x you subtract the mean divide by the standard deviation which is what we do here now to find this cutoff we just back solve for x and we get this now remember this is z sub alpha over 2 which is technically this side which is negative so you have to take the negative of it to make it a positive. So now we're going to use this x when we find the power. So now under the alternative hypothesis, the distribution is not centered over zero. It's shifted way to the right. It's shifted so far to the right that this x value is this x value. And it has to be shifted way far to the right because to be in the rejection region, which means greater than X, you know, we want it to be 80%, which is the majority of this distribution. So here is the mean under the alternative, and here's the standard deviation. So we want to find this value such that this is beta, or, you know, which means this is 1 minus beta, which is power. So we take X, which we, which we solve down there, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation which is this okay now notice that z sub beta that's a negative value and that's okay that's what we do so this is this is the formula the relationship that we need and there's an n in here so I'm not gonna go through the math because the video is starting to get long but if we solve for n that is the n that we need to make this work so here's the formula for the sample size. Now we're going to use R to illustrate this. We're going to plug in some values and we're going to do some simulations to show that this is indeed the right formula. Okay, here we're in R, uh, Ubuntu Linux based machine. And we want to illustrate using the sample size formula for a McNamara's test. And so here's the formula. The n equals and this and so this is the z sub alpha over 2 and this would be the z sub beta um, one note is that I put parentheses around this assignment and then it prints the value for us and so here we're going to pick two values in the alternative region and just print them and um, and then the sample size formula plugging the values we get 79.5 but we have to take the the ceiling of that the upper bound to make sure we get at least that much power and here's a little function that I created to conduct a simulation so what it does is this line creates a multinomial distribution so um, 
it's a certain sample size and you put in probabilities and we're going to put in four probabilities for each of the four cells the McNamara test replicas how many times we're going to conduct it it creates a uh, a column for each rep so if you want a sample of 10 it creates 10 columns four rows because of the four cells you know that we're going to put in and this uh, this row here is that's the uh, big step here and so what I do is this the this creates a matrix and then I want to I want to go over that matrix the second dimension so I'm going to work over each column and the function that I want to use is McNamara's test but remember that each column is is a, a four so we have to put that into a matrix for McNamara's test and then once we get McNamara's test then we're going to see if, if the test is conducted uh, and the p-value is less than 0.05 here we're not going to use the continuity correction because in our sample size derivations we did not correct or have a continuity correction and so the example here we're going to use 0.45 and 0.2 which are these values here and I put the 0.01 first because of the way that this matrix operator works it, it goes uh, you know one the top left bottom left you know top right bottom right and I want to conduct it for uh, 15,000 times Oops, so I gotta activate this function do the test and it pops out in this scenario we had 80 percent power 81 percent power which is what we wanted and this I'm gonna just go do one more quick illustration uh, the the off diagonals will be the same but the diagonals will be different and this is just an illustration to show you that this test really doesn't look at the diagonals it's it's looking at to see if there's a, ch a probability of a change so we'll just do this one more time wrap at 15,000 and we get 81,000 but that is due to just the the variance of the simulation and so hope you enjoyed it uh, like the video subscribe uh, more is coming out I think the next one I'm working on is I want to look at the exact McNamara's test where this is the uses the um, normal approximation to it so anyway I'll see you later bye